Welcome to the Underground Temple. My name is Hayashi. In this video, I'm going to discuss the Kata Electric. One of Okinawa's great Shorinru masters, Shoshin Nagamine, once stated, if you are not doing Kata, you are not doing Karate. To understand Nagamine's statement about Kata, let's look at the bigger picture. There is a great martial mountain out there with many and varied paths. They can, however, be divided into two main camps. There are the outer form or external schools and the inner form or internal schools. We could also call them the form schools and the no form schools. Both will take you on to and up this mountain, but by very different means. The form schools emphasize physical structure with the knowledge that if your body positioning is correct, the strength will flow unimpeded. The no-form schools, by contrast, develop internal energy first, which then organizes the body's outer structure. Nagamine was correct in his statement about kata. But what his comment doesn't reveal is why kata is so important, and why kata, as a moving and living concept, so keenly defines not just the art of Okinawan karate, but of all form practice worldwide. Kata is a brilliant device. Kata is a mind form within a body form. But most importantly, kata reveals the body electric. The best kept secret about kata to this day is its revelation of how the human biofield, the body's subtle energies, its electromagnetic fields, can be manipulated to double your physical strength instantly. That's right, you heard me correctly, double your physical strength instantly. However, there is one caveat. All the essential kata need decoding to activate this principle. So perhaps when I say that most martial artists in the world will never get to this level of understanding in their forms, I'm putting out a challenge to those of you who practice any Chinese, Okinawan, Korean, or Japanese forms to make the effort to understand this amazing aspect of your arts. Old world practitioners only needed to practice one to three kata because each of the essential forms were complete fighting systems in themselves. Each kata contained enough fundamental principles to construct a whole fighting art around it. More kata didn't make one better, despite the current trend in thinking. Less kata, deeply understood, offered far more valuable lessons. But you had to immerse yourself in a kata for years on end to see this truth. When martial authors like Ian Abernathy or Nathan Johnson state that there are many hidden nuances to kata bunkai or applications, they are unraveling a great mystery for us. But it's not just hidden combat bunkai that lies in kata. Kata presents us with the fundamental principles of human conflict. Kata does not just focus upon physical competitions or physical oppositions. It also reveals emotional, psychic, energetic, vibrational, let's call them quantum lessons for everyday living. Kata then, like Indian yoga, offers us a link back to the source of our own power, our own authenticity, our own vitality. A kata like Saison, or the esoteric San Chin, is not just an evolutionary martial device, it's a revolutionary practice. In this video, I'm going to use Saison Kata, one of the most practiced of the island forms, to show you why Kata is so remarkable. Saison is considered one of the key or essential Kata of Asia to have reached the Western world. It's a masterful composition in every way. This variation is practiced in the Ishin Kempo system, founded in 1970, as a lens focusing into the early ideas techniques and principles that went into Cezanne's creation. One should not be hamstrung in a debate on whose variation of a kata is better, 
but rather find a way to absorb the useful knowledge that all our collaborative efforts have unearthed. Do you think that the best Okinawan fighting arts left us only with simple kicks, punches, and locks? Does that sound like a profound knowledge worthy of being preserved for generations and passed across cultures? Many martial artists believed this back in the 1960s, mainly because of karate's novelty. Today, I know for a fact that the Asian master's grasp of form went way beyond what we in the West believe form training to be about. Did you ever wonder why a kata sequence is configured the way it is? What the logic was behind it? I mean the exact structure, how the hands move, which foot steps forward, etc. Beginning martial artists rightly take a form sequence at face value. That's understandable. You have to start somewhere. The problem, however, is that we haven't left this beginner's mind when it comes to kata, ever. Perhaps it's time we reinvigorate our forms, release the tiger back into the tank, so to speak, and light up this once secretive and dynamic art within an art. The history of the martial arts is one of the greatest stories ever told. It starts with the advent of mankind trying to survive in a world with other men. Imagine Kata, then, as the first chapter in a bestseller called The History of the Martial Arts. The authors titled the first chapter Saison. In the very first sentence, they wanted to convey something deep, something meaningful, something compelling, something powerful that would pull us into their story with a killer statement. Saison Kata satisfies this ideal. If you really understood just the opening sequence of this form, you could stop 90% of all civilian-style assaults against you. That's the depth the Okinawan masters hope to convey to us with their kata legacy. But rather than have us read a book on their ideas, they did one better. They asked us to climb into their heads and into their bodies by doing their forms, not just reading about doing them. Kata is two arts in one, that which you can see or its outer structure and that which you cannot see or its inner structure. I'm going to perform the opening sequence of Saison to familiarize you to the pattern. The deep lessons of Kata will not be found in what you see me do on the outside. The real art, what I call the art within the art, lies in what is not visible and most likely Kata's hidden mechanics were not conveyed to many of the first-generation American masters and subsequently not to their contemporary students. Let me pose a series of simple questions to help you get a better understanding of what the inner nature of kata practice is all about. A martial bow is done for many different reasons. For some, it's considered a simple Asian gesture or salutation. Others suggest it conceals hidden combat bunkai. On closer inspection, however, the bow is actually an energy-gathering qigong or kiko meditation practice. Each move is a calculated action to draw, gather, and to distribute ki around the body, ending with its compression into the dantian or physical energy center, precisely where the karate belt knot should be worn. While performing a bow, one should be relaxed, let the chest sink, and engage the hands without tension while letting the concentration sink into the lower abdomen.
The arms form energetic bridges to one another. Thus, the correct passing of the arms can greatly enhance one's physical strength. Evidence of the body's electromagnetic field manipulation is quite apparent in the structure of all the essential kata coming out of Asia, once you understand the internal principles. They say the devil is in the details. In kata work, the small things can make a big difference where physical strength is concerned. The body rises to pull yin energy up from the ground and into the limbs for specific strength applications. We could call this stepping action brilliant subtlety. Unlike a right step forward, the left foot crescent is a yin action. When properly understood and performed, it causes an instant and pervasive drop in the opponent's strength even without any contact with the other's body. These moves are not punches at all. They probably were never intended to be, at least not at the high end. The giveaway is the pop at the end of the strikes. Look at the last of the three steps. Right punch with a left hikite or returning chambered hand. The final move ends the fight with a double joint locking standing submission. Martial breath control isn't about holding your breath or exhaling ferociously. Proper respiratory mechanics manipulate the body's electromagnetic fields to add to your physical power or subtract from it. It's imperative to breathe from the lower abdomen and to know precisely when to inhale versus exhale. I've probably given many of you a lot to think about, and I have made some bold assertions about kata in general. I don't make such comments lightly. I've trained in Okinawan kata for 47 years. I want to see the kata arts of the world thrive. To do that, we all need to get into the real meat and bones of a form, not just its superficial techniques. Stay connected for more depth about authentic martial practice. And thanks for listening.